Hello and welcome to Barely Contain, the podcast that sorts the wheat from the chaff of the UK's online celebrity journalism and then exclusively serves up the latter. I'm Matt Withers and once again I'm joined by Chris Beckett to audit some audacious show business repertoire, including Charlotte Crosby's boob riddle, a very awkward bill standoff, some classic Rio Ferdinand murking and Lucy Verasami's guilty secret. Let's delve in. Hello there, Chris. Hi, Matt. And um, we're back after a uh, short and unscheduled break of I, a few months. I would say hiatus. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was no plan. We just uh, haven't got around to doing it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we've basically been willing. The, the body, the mind has been willing. The celebrity stories have still been shit. So there's been no shortage of material. Uh, yeah, so I mean... I, are we going to call this the beginning of Series 3? Yeah, why not? Series 2 was a very truncated uh, series of uh, just a couple of episodes, but uh, there you go, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, in the time we've been away, uh, Chris, you got engaged and I've had shingles. Yep. So, uh, <laughs> a bit of, bit of news for everyone there. But as you say, uh, the, the, the quality of online show business repertoire has not improved one iota. Um, I believe that you have got something from the Daily Star online about Charlotte Crosby. In front I of you. do, yes. And this is from the pen of the venerable Regan Oakey. Charlotte Crosby sparks boob job rumours after sharing pick of huge assets. This is good. So we're going straight in with some some real, really kind of like wood, wooden burn. We're getting high, like high brow, <laughs> high brow from the off. Charlotte Crosby's chest is causing controversy. There is now a Charlotte Crosby boob riddle sweeping the internet after the former Geordie Shaw starlet shared a seriously sexy picture. It really, this riddle has swept the internet, hasn't it? I like to think of it as something from Labyrinth. You've got left boob, one of us speaks only the truth. <laughs> right boob, the other speaks only in lies. <laughs> uh, yes, it is quite the conundrum, isn't it? Yeah. One endorsing a job's first Brexit, the other favouring the Canada Plus Plus <laughs> deal. The Charlotte Crosby Instagram account has seen a number of new posts during the week in promotion of the starlet's new In The Style range. However, fans were unable to concentrate on her new collection because Charlotte's chest appears to have become inflated to a huge size. See, this, um, this starts off by saying it's seriously sexy and now I'm describing her like she's a bouncy castle. <laughs> a Michelin man. <laughs> yeah. In fact, the picture which sparked the conversation appears to have made everyone forget about the Charlotte Crosby bear drama. It it has for me. (laughs) It's made me forget to the extent I think I've convinced myself I didn't even know what it was in the first place. Oh, we all remember the Charlotte Crosby bear drama. Perching her peach on a table... (laughs) I'll say that again. Perching her peach on a table... Just to to paint a quick still life of it, presumably... (laughs) No need to explain anymore. Perching a peach on the table, the brunette beauty posed for a sultry snap wearing a skin-tight grey mini-dress. The strapless number clung to her curves tighter than skin, (laughs) giving fans an eyeful of Charlotte's chest. How is that scientifically possible? How did it cling to her tighter than her skin? Tighter than skin. I mean, that's not... that, That would... I mean, that would... Killer. Yeah, well, I was going to say, if it was tighter than skin, surely it would somehow supplant the skin in some way. It would. Uh, I mean, she basically kind of um, asphyxiates herself, or, or some kind of. You know, she's effectively kind of performing taxidermy upon herself. I would say, you know, the end of the style range would probably suffer if it was tighter <laughs> than skin. Yeah. Going braless also cost Charlotte's alert assets to poke through the flimsy fabric. What does alert assets mean? I don't understand anything anymore. What does it mean? They're just... They're just well informed. They know what's going on. <laughs> she wrote, My new In The Style range launches tomorrow morning at 8am. This mesh dress is one of my faves. The collection has so many unreal pieces. Can't wait for you all to see. It didn't take long for some of Charlotte's million followers to start speculating about her boobs, with many questioning if she'd had any surgical enhancements. One shocked fan wrote, how big have your bangers got? Oh, tawdry, tawdry. <laughs> I used to look back and think Belly Hill was unsophisticated <laughs> when it came to his treatment of women. But, 
you know, this is pre-Twitter. Yeah, there's um, there's not many kind of uh, double entendres here. People are just laying it on straight. Well, another asked, have you had your boobs done? Look bigger. A third chimed in, nipples. <laughs> Have you, Charlotte? There's a boy in my class at school who just, um, <laughs> apropos of nothing, joined class to just shout um, nipples at the top of his voice. Uh, he's now a uh, serving member of Cheshire Can Stop <laughs> Really? Yeah. <laughs> Phil still finds time to put the occasional <laughs> missive on uh, Instagram. That's not all, as the comments came thick and fast. Another replied, Can I ask Charlotte, have you had your boobs done recently? Is that saying it though she's on like a Radio 5 live phone? Uh, yeah. As I was a guest. <laughs> as I was saying to your researcher, <laughs> I'm interested as to whether Charlotte's boobs have been yes. grown. I was complimenting Charlotte's <laughs> bangers to your researcher and I, uh, I, I just couldn't help but say nipples. <laughs> They're looking rather fuller. The entire comment section of Charlotte's picture was flooded with comments like these, with some insisting she, in quotes, definitely had had a boob job. Despite the speculation, Charlotte is yet to comment on whether she's had any enhancements on her chest. Oh, that's terrible. I mean, Senator, tell oh. us what you knew and when you knew it. However, the just tattoo of us, babe, has been open in the past about her love of lip fillers. Um, yeah, we're going off the we're going off the point now, aren't we? I think I think maybe we should just cut this off. Okay, let's yeah. wrap, wrap that one up there. <laughs> Now, Matt, I understand you have got a story about one of the uh, new celebs on the scene, a uh, a Gogglebox starlet. I have indeed. Just uh, You just catch me having a mouthful of Francis Garner vice beer there. Uh, yes, the headline on this uh, is Going Dutch. This is from the Sun. Gogglebox Amy Tapper's first ever date ends in disaster, in capitals, after row over paying the bill on Celebs Go Dating. Subhead. The pair had a very awkward chat as they struggled to decide who should pick up the tab. Um, awkward. You're going to be hearing this word yeah. quite a bit in this story. So as, as I... Um, I'm girding my loins. As, as I read through, um, I will help by alerting you to the fact that uh, the word awkward has been used um, by the means of uh, an owl sound on a uh, small Halloween-themed sound machine Sounds that I have good. next to me. Yeah. This is by Jess Wakefield. Amy Tapper's first ever date ended in disaster when she rowed with her date over who should pay. It's always a tricky one. Always, you know, we've all been there. Yep. The Gogglebox star, 18, had a very awkward... (laughs) ...chat with her man Ash as they struggled to decide who should pick up the tab. In a clip from the hit show, Amy can be seen getting in the awkward... Exchange with her date. When the waiter came over with the bill, an awkward <coughs> silence ensued. Amy asked, What do you want to do then? Split it? Mm-hmm. Her date Ash returned the question, asking, What would you like to do? It's your shout. What a repost. It is a repost. Um, but one that could be taken to mean, It's your shout, as in you should decide, or It's your shout, as in you should pay. The waiter looked on awkwardly as the uncomfortable conversation continued. The pair couldn't agree and kept saying it was the other one's shout Mm. as the waiter looked on in awkward silence. Speaking to the camera afterwards, Amy exclaimed, I can't believe he's asking me what I want to do. This is so awkward. (laughs) Surely, I mean, you know... Maybe I'm taking one side on this, but it seems like Ash is being a complete gentleman. Yeah, it seems it seems to me uh, that he is acting, uh, you know, relatively chivalrous here. Mm. Um, also, I would say that Jess Wakefield should be asking Santa for a thesaurus. Yes. <laughs> uh, there are other words apart from uh, awkward. Eventually, the two agreed they would split the bill. But to add insult to injury... What injury? Yeah, <laughs> there isn't an injury here, is there? They, they've had a... I mean, things got awkward. Yeah, they've had the, they've had a hashtag awkward conversation about who to pay. Nobody, nobody's, you know, 
Nobody's lost an eye. But to add insult to injury, when Amy went to pay, Ash called her up on the fact she doesn't have a contactless payment card. Ooh, that's, <laughs> a, that's a millennial diss right uh, there. On a first date. <sighs> Clearly unimpressed. But why does she not have a, a contactless card? You know, this is 2018. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's a very good point. And, it, you know, it's not like the bank wouldn't give you one when your other one expired. Correct. And she's presumably only just opened up her first proper yeah. account, being 18 years old. She's got her last NatWest pig. <laughs> yeah. She's got Sir Nathaniel, and now she's ready for her first card. Okay, carry on. Clearly unimpressed, Amy didn't want to humour her, her unchivalrous date. Not that unchivalrous. The telly star quit Gogglebox, the show that made her famous... Okay, I might have questions about this. (laughs) To participate in Celebs Go Dating. Have you ever heard of her before? Nope. Nope. I mean, I don't watch Gogglebox. I have watched Gogglebox and I don't know who she is. Well, um, she thinks that people know who she is. Uh, Amy has been vocal about wanting to find Mr. Right. The self-professed dating amateur has thrown herself into looking for love alongside her fellow celebs. Yes, joining the uh, joining the professional ranks of uh, <laughs> people who go on dates all the time for money. Yeah. She was very, she very much uh, exhibited Corinthian values yeah. in, in her previous approach to dating. <laughs> the star has since revealed that she turned to the celebrity dating agency to help her find love after admitting Gogglebox had a serious impact on her love life. I suppose you couldn't be having sex while you were on camera talking about, um, I don't know, Last of the Summer Wine. (laughs) That's not on anymore. Um, First of the Summer Wine. (laughs) The spin-off. What she says is, uh, it can be a hindrance. I think you get a bit like, are they actually interested in me? Or do they actually want to see what it's like to be in the public eye? Mm. Mate. (laughs) Yeah. No one knows who you are. (laughs) I think the only way she's put herself in the public eye is by not having a contactless credit card, which I think <laughs> most people do have. I think that would that would probably put people off. Yeah. yeah. I mean, luncheon vouchers, they're not going to cut it. We're, we're a busy society, and a gentleman does not have time to wait for somebody to tap their numbers into the, uh, yeah, the chip Yeah, I don't care pit. whose fucking shout it is. <laughs> get a proper card, get on with it. Okay, and moving on from a perhaps unsuccessful story about modern dating, we have one of the great, lovely, contemporary love stories from the Mail Online by Mail Online Reporter. Rio Ferdinand and fiancé Kate Wright go horse riding with his kids in sweet family outing before he makes a very crass joke about defecating. Oh, that wasn't going where I expected it to. (laughs) I think the male are in a really weird position where they obviously have to be loyal to their print audience who would find such a joke outrageous, but at the same time they have to be loyal to their um, sidebar of shame-loving online audience who would lap up Instagram tidbits like this. Yeah, um, I mean, we know that the print readers do have uh, a sense of humour, but that comes from an aphorism-spouting basset hound. (laughs) He rung in his 40th birthday with a lavish party in Manchester last week. But Rio Ferdinand opted for a more relaxed weekend this Saturday as he went for a horse riding session with fiance Kate Wright and his three children, Lorenz, 12, Tate, 10 and Tia, 7. The footballer shared a sweet Instagram shot of the family during their woodland stroll, captioning it, Saturday family time, two kids horse riding, us three dodging the horse. Kate wrapped up warm in a black puffer jacket and skinny jeans for the autumnal stroll, finishing off her look with simple black boots. She walked along with one of Rio's sons, while his other two children trotted ahead on horses alongside an instructor. However, the wholesome family fun took a crass turn later (laughs) in the day when Rio pretended to defecate in the woods. (laughs) Defecate as well. (laughs) The... The football pundit shared a snap of himself, miming dropping his trousers, which he captioned, coat off, squat, pull them up. <laughs> I mean, I mean that is quite crass, isn't it? Uh, uh, and he's, what, how old is he? <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, he's just turned 40 <laughs> oh, yeah. years old. Yeah, sorry, I, I was paying attention. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I do think he's probably uh, a little bit old for those kind of shenanigans. Yeah, 
but I'm just looking through to see if there's anything more interesting about this. Uh, no, no, no. Oh, uh, no. Uh, They've managed to mine quite a lot more. She got him some flip. She got guests at his 40th flip flops so they could be comfy. Um, yeah, that's about it. Right, for your uh, delight and delectation, I found a story on Daily Star online. This is by Charlotte Conan. And mm-hmm. it's headlined The Queen's Footy Position Revealed as it emerges Her Majesty used to. Play! <laughs> the Queen's fondness for a royal kickabout has been revealed in uh, a new biography. Oh, that's good, I like this. The Queen, 92, is mm. said to have enjoyed a game of football during her holidays in Norfolk. Mm-hmm. The details have been exposed. <laughs> exposed. <laughs> exposed. <laughs> You've been trying to hide it all this time. <laughs> In a new biography of her eldest son, Prince Charles, oh, out today. Uh, her, her eldest son, Prince Charles. That, <laughs> that, 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 yeah, that yeah. Prince Charles. Yeah. In Charles at 70, Thoughts, Hopes and Dreams, royal commentator Robert Jobson writes... Thoughts, oh, I'd like to be king. Hopes, I hope I will be king. <laughs> Dreams, I wish I could be king. Dur- during holidays, Christmas and the New Year at Sandringham, and most of the summer holidays at Balmoral... The whole family would play football with the diminutive queen acting as goalkeeper. <laughs> diminutive. <laughs> Go lobber! Lobber! And very much the um, Jorge Santos, <laughs> was it? The Mexican <laughs> with, the, with the fluorescent wait, kits. Wait, wait for her to commit herself <laughs> and chip her. The, the exact timing of the five foot four inch matriarch spell as a stopper is not revealed. That's bullshit. I want to know when she made her debut. <laughs> five foot four inch matriarch. I mean, then you, people have been sent to the tower for less. H R H between the posts. <laughs> it is also not clear when the oldest serving monarch retired from the pitch. I, I take it she would have had a uh, guard of honour. Yeah, she was. I mean, uh, testimonial. Yeah, yeah. Play against Celtic, obviously. You know, because yeah. they, they bring a big crowd, don't yeah. they? Her Majesty's proudest football moment probably would have been at Wembley on July the thirtieth, nineteen sixty-six. Probably when she presented the Jules Remy Trophy to Bobby Moore, captain of the England team, after he led them to beat West Germany four-two in the World Cup. I disagree. I think it's almost certainly the time that she did a wobbly legs against Prince Edward when he was <laughs> running out to take a penalty. Yeah, completely f- threw him off his shit. <laughs> very, very, very the, the, the kind of uh, the Jersey do deck <laughs> yeah. of, uh, of the royal family. Liz's mind games are legendary the queen has never revealed if she follows a footy team herself hmm could this be a prelude to some sort of uh, speculating on what team she might follow well i mean you've, you've done these kind of stories before <laughs> haven't you a decade or so ago there was speculation she was a fan of moore's old team west ham Fair enough. I don't remember this speculation, and uh, you know a citation is needed. I've never seen it at Upton Park. But... <laughs> I've never seen a blowing bubbles. But there have also been reports she's an Arsenal fan. Jeremy Corbyn, himself a Gunners fan, and the club's MP, mm-hmm. the, 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 the MP for Arsenal, <laughs> yeah, exactly, um, recalled how a bad back meant she was unable to open their Emirates Stadium back in 2006. It's not the first time it's been claimed the Queen supports Arsenal. Apparently, uh, she once told uh, a Cesc Fabregas she was an Arsenal fan. That was just trolling. <laughs> seems, <laughs> seems like a, 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 an unlikely uh, conversation. Uh, goes on for a, a little bit. Mm. And then uh, William and his younger brother, Prince Harry, have clearly inherited the grandmother's fondness for the game. Neither shares their grandmother's fondness for the pride of East London. So we've gone from the... There's been speculation yep. to have been West Ham. She's but, a definite but, fan. But she told people it was Arsenal to the fact that she is now a fully uh, signed up member of the Green Street crew. Yes, yeah. Uh, William is an Aston Villa fan, while Harry supports Arsenal. Yeah, good. Finally, Chris, I believe you have one last quick one. Um, 
with uh, Lucy Verasami of ITV. Revealing, it, I think, I think it's a. I heard some kid told me a pretty amazing secret. Well, it's um, it's the Daily Express, so uh, unsurprisingly, it's a story about a weather presenter, <laughs> Lucy Verasami. It's a slippery slope. ITV weather star spills newsroom secrets. So this is, um, she's talking about a metaphorical slippery slope and not warning people about... Yeah, it's no, you don't need to get your grit out. Lucy Verasami, who regularly presents the weather forecast on ITV in Good Morning Britain, has spoken out about a secret in the newsroom, revealing it's her, in quotes, guilty pleasure. What could it be? ITV weather presenter Lucy Verasami... Is, is it heroin? <laughs> it's very Moorish. <laughs> ITV weather presenter Lucy Verasami, 38, said there is often a, in quotes, secret stash of treats in the office, such as biscuits, which she is, in quotes, easily led by. (sighs) Revealing all, she said, I'm easily led when it comes to biscuits. It's a slippery slope. Someone usually has a secret stash in the newsroom. And Lucy admitted, despite being fit and healthy, she also enjoys tucking into bread. What a lot of bollocks. <laughs> it's not a secret stash. They know where it is. She enjoys tucking into bread. That doesn't mean that you're not fit and healthy if you enjoy having bread. Um, I mean, the final quote, slippery final slope, quote from her here bullshit. regarding the, the bread issue. Go on. Uh, she added to Now magazine, If I'm out for dinner, freshly baked bread with salted butter or olive oil and balsamic. Great. <laughs> well, I think um, I think we've proven our point that the quality of celebrity reportage yeah. has not uh, has not improved in in our hiatus. It's so good to be back. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Right, uh, listeners, we'll see you again in May. <laughs> that was season three. <laughs> well, thank you very much, uh, Chris, for for that. I don't know if thanks is the kind of you know. No, I mean you know we could just do some sort of shared commiserations, finish our beer, and then go off to our separate lives. Yeah, let's do that. Just get on with our lives. But before we do that, I should probably, as a as a token effort, um, remind people that we are available on Twitter uh, at barely underscore pod, and you can also see us on Facebook. Yes, uh, and you can find us on Apple Podcasts, uh, where you could leave us uh, a review. Um, maybe not after this one. If you went back to some of the early yeah, ones, yeah, maybe cause... maybe dig dig for the gold. Yeah. Dig for the gold. We're on Spotify as well, which might be even easier for you. Yes, that's right. You can uh, unaccountably listen to us on on Spotify now. So yeah, dig out some of those earlier ones where, when we you know, you know we were young and more enthusiastic. <laughs> Don't remember us from this. No. Don't remember us from this. This is not how we wish to be remembered. Yeah, this is one of those sort of ill-fated Spice Girls s <laughs> comebacks. All right. Well. Thanks a lot, and hopefully we will be back in a couple of weeks this we time. We will. We will. <laughs> Ooh, awkward.